y'all welcome back it is on and popping this is the first episode of kev and pratch on earth and today we got a really good topic for you guys we are talking about future generations all right and so uh, let me just do a little bit of an introduction for those who are just now starting to tune in. Uh, my name is Kevin Anytime. I'm the director of Mindset Matters, and this is my beautiful co-host, uh, Pratch. And Pratch, just go ahead and introduce yourself here. Hi, I'm Prachitha. Also go by Pratch. All right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about future generations today, y'all. And so here's how we want to go about this okay so we got a little outline for you and today we're going to talk about why is it important to care about the children of now so that's how we're going to kick this off and since i have children right i got a small five-year-old boy and i got a seven eight month old girl um it's important to start taking care of the kids now and helping them to focus their mindsets now because that's the future right that's what the title is all about it's the future generations if we don't pay specific attention to these kids and help them to understand that um they need to take care of themselves they need to take care of other people they need to take care of the earth then that's going to we're basically going to be spinning our wheels we're going to be in a hamster wheel of repeating the same cycles so what we really need to focus on is ensuring that we are setting up these future generations with the proper tools to know what's actually going to happen, that things just don't automatically happen, that they need to actually play a part in society and on the earth when they're actually doing different activities, right? Or when they're conducting themselves as adults when they grow up because they're the future presidents, they're the future um, government and everything else. And so what I like to do is I like to highlight the importance of explaining to my son right now, because he's more receptive to information, explaining to him how I'm helping him to grow, right? The way that I help him to grow is I let him know, hey, I'm just here to guide you to be the best human being that you can possibly be, right? I don't know the specific right direction or right answers that he needs to go in, but what I am is a guidance system for him so that he can go in a direction that is going to be most beneficial. Um, so that's just a little bit of how I'm going about this. Uh, go ahead and give them some information you got on this, Brad. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a that's a very good intro to that because I, I remember like when I was a kid, I would feel like nothing was in my control. Like the adults were taking care of all of it. And, you know, you, you grow up and it happens so fast. Like now we are the adults. We are the people taking care of it. So it's important to have that like autonomy and that independence and knowing that you are in control. Um, so I think I just wanted to do, oh, I'm on the wrong document. Okay. I think I just wanted to talk about the importance of language. How are we speaking to kids? Even if it's just like, you know, your cousin or just like a random kid that's walking by, like, are, are we telling them that they're annoying? Are we saying these <laughs> things to them? Because that that's actually very impactful to them and that's going into their subconscious and they're going to internalize it in some way. So just being kind and watching how you speak to kids and maybe like saying less. I've noticed that saying less around kids and listening to them more, I learn a lot more um, and I get a lot more insight and I can see that they're also learning and they're growing in that in that um, relationship of listening more. And now you said, did you say earlier, uh, before we even started recording, we were kind of talking y'all, but did you say that you uh, had experience like working in a daycare or something like that? Yeah, um, I okay. actually had I actually had a, a part time job at the gym and I worked in the child care center. So it was very interesting to see how kids were interacting with each other and work through the problems that they had. Like if if one of the kids like pushed another kid, then I was just trying to be the mediator. But I wanted them to figure it out. So I wasn't going to be like, hey, you should 
like go go say this i'm not i didn't ever want to like command kids to do i think that's something like um yeah kids don't really want to be told what to do they want to feel like they have an option in what to do so maybe a suggestion so when when i saw like a kid push someone else i was like hey i think that that like teaching teaching them empathy teaching them how the other person might have felt i think that that really hurt person b i think that maybe it would be nice of you to apologize and thoughtful yeah yeah that's um that's something i definitely go through uh with my son right now with him being five um it's funny we just went through that situation he he does stuff sometimes that is like you said like is annoying and <laughs> and it, i try not to use that word a lot right because he is is very receptive right now to to language and um i used to say over say things a lot like stupid or this is this is getting on my nerves or or very negative language and now that i have him i have to be very cognizant of what i'm talking about and what i try to do is ensure that when he's doing something well to really really hone in on that um it could be something as simple as putting his plate away uh i have to really pay attention to how often i'm encouraging him as opposed to just being like stop doing that stop doing this stop doing this because that's hindering all of his his creativity and his process and his progress so it's something that i've been able to really really pay attention to just watching this this kid grow up because I mean, I've said it multiple times. I really, I really don't feel like a parent. It's, it's interesting that I have a child because, or I have children because I still don't really feel like I'm their, their parent. It's more of, uh, I feel like I'm a, a person that's just there to guide them, to help them to, to understand how life is going to go. Um, but those things, when you really consider how important it is and how impactful and powerful it is to, to raise a human being, um, it's a pretty serious job. So there are little things like that, that you have to pay attention to is language for sure. Because if you use too much of certain language, they will adopt that immediately. Like my son says, dude, and stuff like that now, because I say that a lot. Um, but things that that are harmful is is what we want to watch out for. And, and we want to try and focus more on the beneficial saying so that they can grow and and be more beneficial in in their life when they're expelling energy talking to people talking to different uh, different kids and stuff like that we really want to make sure that we're doing the best we can to, to stay to keep top of mind of what we're saying but yeah um let's see what are they faced with so that's the next thing we want to talk about what are they faced with what oh my goodness they face with a lot man it's, 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 this uh i just oh man this is good because <laughs> this is helping me to think um the, some of the things that they face with one of the major things is is youtube and just the open sea of that i had to uh literally cut off and and make a um a small playlist for for him like a uh the youtube kids channel is what i have to download so that i can make sure like it's just kids stuff on there because some stuff it looks like it's for kids and it's not really for kids and i'm like what is this stuff man I was, he was looking at the thumbnails like, are like, deceiving oh my goodness i was like what is this dude and it looked cartoony and like it was for kids but it really wasn't and i was like okay no i gotta really take hold of this because yeah it's just crazy stuff going on but what have you seen what is your take on that um well i think i like had i was just kind of like jotting some mental notes down while mm -hmm. you were talking so uh when you mentioned uh how you said you sometimes you were like annoyed i i decided um that there was a word that i kept saying a lot I, I think I could say it on here. I just said, damn, like I did say like, damn it, when something happened. And so I was like, I say that word a lot. Can I like flip that to make it not such a negative connotation? And so I used noted, noted, like, oh, noted, that happened. Okay, mm. I spilled my coffee, 
noted instead of saying the other phrase. And, <laughs> right. so, and so maybe that's something to think about. Like if, if there is something that um, someone usually says around a kid or to a kid, they can try to think of how to flip it around in a different way. Um, right. What are they faced with? I mean, I want to start that off by um, talking about how adults usually talk about their life, you know, going to work, like feeling tired and stressed. And that's something that you hear so often, like, hey, how's your day? Oh, good, just tired. Oh, I'm good. I'm just stressed out, you know, and and, and that's okay because, you know, that, that happens. But like when kids start to hear that and, and they're like looking up to adults and they're seeing like, oh man, this is adult life, stressed, tired, anxious. Is there, is there anything else to it? So, um, like there's an importance in showing them that there is there is a lot more than than just than just that. Yeah. So that no, they I... have hope. So that they have hope. Right, right. Some kind of hope, right? So, yeah. So I'm kind of like, oh man, I'm gonna like... grow up and this is gonna be terrible. I'm gonna be stressed all the time. And you know, now what's interesting about that is that that could be a, a programmed that could be a future programmed mechanism that you can actually implant into a kid. And so you, you do, you really want to pay attention to that because as they're growing and, and as they're developing and absorbing, and as we're talking about language and all this different stuff, um, they're paying attention to specifically you, like specifically, like seeing what you do, seeing how you react to situations, all of that. And so if you do continuously go in that, that loop, of oh i'm tired oh i'm stressed out oh i'm doing this oh i'm doing that which is something i'm now i'm now gonna have to consider because i'll be working so much I, I try to dedicate time to to play with my son but I, I, that always is gonna be something i'm juggling with it needs work but it's 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 a part of their development that you can implant into them because like you said they're going to look forward to it and so they're not really necessarily going to say oh i don't you know can you stop saying that i don't want to look forward to uh <laughs> to be stressed out they're just going to continuously just be around it and be absorbed in it and then next thing you know that's what they're going to start doing and so we really really want to pay attention to that and be be really cognizant of what we're saying and what we're doing around them so that we don't haphazardly program a system into them that they really that they really don't need because that's not something that they should be looking forward to they should be looking for greater possibilities in all things and and that's just something that we got to change as a society that's why this is a pretty important topic you know to to go over so how can we help? That's how we can go into the next thing. Like, what what can we do? What can we do? You got anything that that you uh, you've got any research or anything on that? Of, as um, far as how we can help. Well, I could. or just or you can just go ahead and what what you had if you had a different point. I think I just have so many things. Like like always, <laughs> I'm having so many things to say that I can't like. <laughs> pinpoint the one thing that I want to say. <laughs> All right, um, that's cool. I think we can help by being more involved because I I don't really like see kids in my life. Like there are kids in my neighborhood. Like maybe I could like huff out in the evening and be like, hey, you guys want to play? And even that like interaction, and especially if it's going to be consistent, um, mm -hmm. like it, it would create a positive effect in their lives how can we help does start with how can you help yourself because oh, yeah. it, if you're not really not really feeling yourself if you're not really like in in a positive mindset and you know you're we're bombarded with things all the time i think that you mentioned this before um then you're kind of just like taking everything that put it and just like putting it out there so you want to make sure you you're limiting the noise and inputting just what what you want and connecting to your inner self more because because that's also how you're able to have more patience with kids if you're just just chilling just being present mindful letting them do their thing yeah no it's it's that's incredibly important <laughs> that's like yeah because um it's so funny i i 
keep hearing on like different platforms and stuff of this this saying that I originally heard when I was at 3T as far as like putting your your oxygen mask on uh, first on the airplane, right? It's like they tell you to do that because you're the one who can can handle the rest of the situations, right? Don't put it on your kid and then you, you know, die or something and then they, they won't know what to do, right? So it's like you got to make sure that you're okay first and then be able to... Uh, be able to help guide them in the direction so it does it really really does start with us we you know the mindfulness the the all of that will help you to be more patient in in everything else that you're doing <clears throat> because if you don't settle yourself down there is you can't settle anything else down you can't you can't settle a child down if you're not settled inside yourself and that's just speaking from experience if if i'm riled up about something and i'm trying to calm my son down it's it's not gonna work uh but if if i'm calm and i come to him in a calm manner it's very easily transitioned to for him to be calm in that situation so um, really, really, really paying attention to how you're conducting yourself is, is how we can help for sure. Um, are you, you know, do you have practices? Are you, do you have habits? Do you, are you building strong habits? Stuff like that can really help them to see what they need to be doing. Um, like it's something I just started with my son is, is to do a prayer in the morning every time he wakes up, uh, to start that habit of, of mindfulness to to praying to really saying you know how do i want my day to go is is really kind of what we go over and that's something that's incredibly important because they need systems they need systems and processes to to go off of um i, I initially when he was growing up i thought that it was this you know hey he's gonna be okay he's gonna find his own guidance system and as he's growing i'm starting to see like okay there is a little more fine tuning of that that i need to do there's a little more directional um pieces that i need to start implementing so that he can he can build that um that system off of some type of a foundation um so that's really important but yeah. Yeah. What you got? What you got? Um, I can talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs because this is yeah. kind of what humans are trying to develop in, in their journey of life. So it's it's Maslow's hierarchy hierarchy of needs. It's the pyramid. At the bottom, we have psychological needs, um, air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, and then there's also reproduction on there. Um, so, you know, these are just, oh, these, I meant physiological needs. This is not psychological, physical, physiological needs. So okay. that's obviously the basis to, um, programming our biological computer, um, just making sure like all of those needs are met. Um, then safety needs, personal security, resources, health, and things like that. So kids need to feel safe. They need to feel safe in their own home. They need to have a sense of calm, a safe place to go back to, um, a safe adult to be able to tell anything to. That's something that I felt like I didn't really have growing up was like no one to like say things to. So it just kind of all be internalized. Um, and the next, the next set is love and belonging, friendship, family a sense of connection um so having having friends is so important for kids like having regular play dates um being able to do extracurricular activities and all all these different like varieties are are very important so it's just so it's not just like a typical mundane life and it's okay to have routine and repetition because that's what they need right uh, but they should also be able to experience different things on the daily and oh, of yeah. that is esteem respect self-esteem status recognition strength and freedom so this is also tied into um language and respecting boundaries asking asking for consent even before you hug a child instead of just going up there and like hugging a child well i 
I'm, I'm sure it's like different for for other people's uh, relationships like a parent mm -hmm. to a child but if you're um if you're just like another adult and there's someone else's child you're not just gonna go and hug up the child you can just be like hey is it okay if i hug you uh i think that's very important to ask consent i ask my pet's consent if i can pick my cat up because obviously obviously i want to know if i can pick him up or not so <clears throat> stuff like that and the top the top part in maslow's hierarchy is self-actualization the desire to become the most that one can be and that is kind of what we're striving for is just trying to be the best version of ourselves and that's what we want all of these humans to eventually get to so taking care of all of those other things is definitely important in order to see where humanity can go and see how like children are getting smarter they're smarter they're more advanced and it, it's it's just crazy because i know there's like there's like eight-year-olds that can do things that i don't even know anything about <laughs> yeah no there's this that's you know that's the way we want it to go hopefully it continues to go that way if, if it ever flips then we're gonna be in some big trouble as a as a race here uh but um yeah it's it's really important to to think about these things y'all um just something we wanted to to kind of come on and, and and chime in about um we really got a lot of information that we want to come to you guys with. Um, I, I met Pratch and we, I saw how impactful of information she has on her uh, TikTok and things like that, as far as like the, the government and uh, climate change and uh, different things that we're going to end up hitting. We're going to end up talking about a lot of different things that just encompass like us and the earth. Uh, so that's why, the, the title is Kevin Pratch on Earth because we're we're pioneering a new way of thinking. That's just what what we need to start helping people to understand is we got to start thinking different. Um, there are things that are coming out here. Uh, technology is changing. The metaverse There's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on that I never thought I would be at this moment in time. But here we are. Um, I'm starting to lose grasp of the technology. It's moving faster than than where I'm at with it. And I'm like, okay. So it's the funny where the, the parents are like, I don't get this. And I'm like, I think I'm starting to get to that point. So I'm trying to catch up, right? So we got to make sure that we are staying ahead of the game, having topics, having conversations like this, and and being in the know of of how things are where things are going how things need to to start changing and how we need to start thinking um because all of that new technology is already here and if we don't have a grasp on it it's it's not slowing down for anybody so um this this was a, a good beginning to our show. Um, thank you very much, Praj, for a lot of the research and things that you have done. Um, <clears throat> just go ahead and uh, tell them where they can where they can find you for some information okay. if they wanted to look you up. Okay, my TikTok is Pratch on Earth, and my Instagram is Prachita underscore Parikas. All right. Um, so, yeah, next time we'll we'll dive a little bit more into the same topic as far as like just the future generations. Uh, we have a little bit more to touch on, but we don't want to overload you guys. Uh, so we'll definitely go into that for next week. So look forward to that. And always remember, y'all, the mindset matters more than anything else. All right. And so we'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.